what is going on guys welcome back to the channel critical overload here so we're going to be talking about the boys season four in this video here today this will be a review for the boys season four all eight episodes which i know they've already released the first three they'll be dropping the others week to week from what i can tell but this will be a review for all eight episodes so the world is on brink victoria newman is closer than ever to the oval office and under the muscly thumb of homelander who is consolidating his power butcher with only months to live has lost becca's son as well as his job as the boys leader the rest of the team are fed up with his lies with the stakes higher than ever they have to find a way to work together and save the world before it is too late now the boys season four continues to excel at what the show does so well it takes shots at everyone in every aspect of modern western culture while balancing it with a story around characters i genuinely care about yes i could argue that towards the end of season three it lost some steam and yes start, bits of that steam being lost are present in season four granted the boys story this time around seemed a bit more slowed down and not as interesting compared to newman and homelander's arcs this penultimate season didn't disappoint Season four, I would argue, just needed more episodes compared to the last three that we've gotten. Additional episodes that would have cleared up my issues with this season, I'm sure. Now, the series has never been subtle about its political commentary. Season four is definitely relishing in that lack of subtlety more than others. We're dealing with defund, defund the soup narratives, critical soup theory, <laughs> and starlighters, a group dedicated to the removal of soups multiple protests etc it also helps when you consider the year we're in and 2024 being considered one of the most important election years in recent memory i will say that the dialogue at times is a bit more cringy especially from our newcomer soups but i'll let you guys watch the rest of the show and figure out what i mean i don't think that the dialogue all in all is cringe but it's clear that the writing just is not as good as the first two seasons i can admit that butcher is on borrowed time thanks to his use of temp v last season and struggling to keep his promise to becca the boys don't trust him and mm has taken over but he's juggling his role with them his role in the cia and a daughter who is acting out homelander confronts his childhood trauma and continues to shape brian as a younger version of himself which is exactly what becca does not want to happen to ryan point is there's a lot going on as usual most of it remains compelling enough but i will say that huey kamiko and frenchie are the weakest links this season for me kamiko and frenchie feel trapped in plot threads we've already seen resolved in past seasons and huey is dealing with his own childhood trauma to learn how to forgive those who've wronged him the problem is the arcs are a bit underwhelming because i'm sitting there going i've seen this before admittedly the nature of huey's dilemma isn't a full-on copy and paste so it's much more relatable compared to kamiko and frenchie's dilemmas luckily all three are entirely more interesting when they get back to the main story for the rest of the season i would say this this if you feel like the first three episodes are dull boring i feel like the show really picks up and becomes a lot more engaging this season episode four and onward that's just me butcher's fear of dying allows us to see a softer side of the character this time around and it's easily the most engaging narrative for any member of the boys this season tony Starr, jack quaid carl urban laz alonzo aaron moriarty and the entire cast deliver as usual their chemistry makes up for writing issues this late in the game star really does some great work also in the fourth episode i only want to draw attention to that because i've been seeing that get highlighted online from some of the creatives involved with the show the unhinged but traumatized nature of homelander is at its best during episode four and episode four just ends with one of the most disgusting gruesome images and deranged looks we've seen from homelander in recent memory now, all in all, I will say that I enjoyed the season for what it was. It's still the boys. I still loved it. It's just, again, clear as day to me that the writing isn't the same as it was with those first two seasons. I think it's taking a nosedive in terms of the quality a bit, but it's still managing to stay afloat because of all the other strengths that still remain present in the show. And the action is still great. The gore, when it's present, is still great. You are going to see a lot of new twists and turns as the series or as the season progresses throughout the rest of the season episodes that drop week to week i do love what they did in the finale the finale definitely set the stage for what is to come in season five it makes me definitely intrigued as to how that season is going to start because of the ramifications that go down there were some pretty shocking demises some pretty shocking revelations also and 
I just had fun with the season. It was a good season to me. Uh, not as good, again, as the first two seasons. I would give this one a 7 out of 10. That's just me. If you guys are enjoying The Boys Season 4, let me know all that down in the comment section below. I would also argue that in terms of the pacing, they definitely do spend a lot of time on certain things that have nothing to do with the core narrative and more to do with developing the boy members. But again, and this is in reference to characters like Huey, Frenchie, and Kamiko. It's things that we've already seen, so the development feels kind of stagnant. But luckily, it doesn't shape their entire presence for the rest of the season. They definitely get back to the core narrative with those three characters who I, again, argued were the weakest link. And it is some pacing issues because of those character arcs that feel a bit repetitive to the point that it's like, why are you focusing so much on this, dedicating so much time to this, when you should be focusing on the main meat and potatoes, which is taking down Homelander, taking down Vought. I just I just didn't understand some of the writing decisions when it came to those three specifically this season. But all in all, again, still good time. Seven out of ten. Let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe. Turn on post notifications so you never miss a video. In the description, I'll have links to all my social media accounts. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course. Let me know if there's any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.